Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll be talking about operators in Python. So I know that we've talked about arithmetic operators in numbers video, but in this video, we learn about four different operator types, including comparison, logical, identity, and membership. So I know that it sounds like we are going to talk about a lot of operators, but don't worry, most of the operators follow a similar concept, meaning it either returns true or first based on the operator type. And once you get the hang of one, you can easily apply the similar logic to all other operators. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first operator type that we're gonna talk about is the comparison operator. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with this, but this is basically checking two values whether one value is greater than the other. So let me create a two integer variable. So I'm gonna say number one equals to four, number two is equal to five. And if you were to just compare this, you would just use number one is greater than number two. And if we run this, it's gonna return first because four is not greater than five. So if I run this, you will see first here. And we can do opposite here. So print number one is less than number two. And if I were to run this, you would see true because five is actually greater than four. Let's move on to the greater or equal to or less than or equal to. So if I were to write print number one is greater than or equal to number two. So what this is checking is that whether number one is actually greater than or equal to number two. So in this case, number one is less than number two. So this is gonna return first as you see here. But if I change the value of number one to five and run this one more time, you'd see true because number one is not greater than number two. However, number one is actually equal to number two. So let's try the opposite. So print number one is less than or equal to number two. And if I were to run this, you would see a uh, true because number one is equal to number two. But if I change the value back to four and then run this, you're going to also see true because number two is greater than number one because five is greater than four here. Okay, so now let's move on to the equal to operator. So write a print statement, number one, two equal sign, number two. So this two equal sign is an equal to operator. So it's checking whether number one's value is actually equal to number two. So whenever we run this, you're going to see it first because number one's value is not equal to number two. But if I write the opposite here, so print number one, exclamation mark, equal sign, number two. So this exclamation mark and equal sign means that we are checking whether number one's value is not equal to number two. So in this case, it's going to return true because four is not equal to five. Okay, so now let's try to use this comparison operators on the string values. So when you are using either greater than or less than operator in string values, it will return true or first based on the alphabetical orders of the string value. So let me show you an example. So I'm going to create a two string variables, string one and set that equal to a, string two and set that equal to b. And let me write a print statement, string one is greater than string two. And whenever we run this, you're gonna see first because we are checking that whether string one has a greater value than string two. And obviously the Python is actually checking in an alphabetical order. So B is after A in alphabetical order. So that's why the Python thinks that the string two, which has the value of B, is greater than the string one, which has the value of A. And we can also do opposite here. So I can do print string one is less than string two. And whenever we run this, you're going to see true because B is after A. So B has a greater value than A. So this alphabetical order based comparison also applies when you have multiple characters. So let's say that we have a two different values here. For the string one, we have A, B, C, D. And for the string two, we have A, B, C, E. And if we were to test this, so let me comment this out and let me run the first print statement here. So we are checking whether string one is greater than string two. So in this case, it's going to return first because up until the A, B, C is identical. But whenever you look at the fourth character, the string one has a D and string two has the fourth character of E. And so the Python will think that the string two has a greater value than string one because the fourth character difference that we have here. So if I run this, you will see first. And then if I uncomment this and then try to run this one more time, then you will see true because up until the ABC is identical. But since the E here is greater than the D here, it's going to return true in this statement. And just like the example from the integers, we can uh, test out the equal to operator. So we can do string one is equal equal string two. So we are checking whether string one's value is equal to string two. In this case, it's different. So this is going to return first, as you see. But if I write the opposite, string, string one is not equal to string two it will return true because the string one is actually not equal to string two here. Okay, so now let's talk about the logical operators in Python. So the logical operator is being used to combine to combine the Boolean 
value true or first to generate an outcome between two expressions. Okay, let me break this down. And there are three types of logical operators and or not. So the truth table that I'm showing you to the right of the screen is showing you the result between true or first expression using the and operator here. So let's walk through them one by one. So if I were to do print true and true, this will always return true because we only have a true here. So true and true gonna always return true. So let me run this, you see true here. And if I do print true and first, so if any one of the operand has the first, then it's always gonna return first when you are using the and operator. So when you run this, you receive first here. And then same thing, print first and true, it's gonna return first because the first operand is the first. So run this and you will see first again. And if you have a first and first, it will always return first because you don't have any true in this expression. So this is the and logical operator. So let's try to do the same thing for the or operator. So if I do print true or true, it's gonna return true because we only have a true here, as you see. And then if I do print, true or first. So the difference between and or or here is that if you have a first in one of the operand using the and, it's always gonna return first. However, if you have a first in one of the operand using the or operator, it's always gonna return true. So in this case, it's gonna return true here. So if I run this, you will see true. And then same thing, print first or true it's gonna return true as well because one of the operand is first and we are using the OR operator and we have a true here, so it's gonna return true. Okay, and then if we do the same thing, first OR first, it's gonna return first because you don't have any true in this statement. So run this, you receive first. Okay, so now let's talk about the NOT operator. So you can think of the NOT operator as the opposite of the value that you print in the print statement. So if I do print, not true means that it's gonna return first because not true is first the opposite of true is first so if i run this you receive first here and same thing print not first will return true because the opposite of first is true so if i run this you will see true here okay so now we talked about the logical operators let me go through some examples using different expressions so let me create some variables so i'm gonna do uh number one number two Number three here equal to five, six, and one. And then I'm gonna also set the string variables. So string one, string two equal to A, B, C, D, and A, B, C, D. So I'm just using the single line assignment here. So five corresponds to number one, six corresponds to number two, and so on. So let me create a print statement. Print number two minus number one equal equal number three. And then let me use the and logical operator and string one equal equal string two. And let's also put some parentheses to define the order of operations. So parentheses here and then here. So okay, so what we have here is that we have a two expressions. So in this parentheses, we are checking whether the outcome of this subtraction between number two minus number one is equal to number three. And then the second expression that we have is checking whether string one value is equal to string two value. So we can already think about the outcome here. So let me just comment here. So outcome of this expression is true and we have the and logical operator and also the outcome of this operation is true as well. So as we saw in the previous example in the truth table, if you have a true and true, it's gonna return true. So if I run this, you will see true here. Okay, so now then let me try to change this operand here to the first. So if I want to make this first, let me just swap these two values. So I'm gonna do number one minus number two. So if we subtract the number one by number two, we're gonna get negative one and it does not equal to number three. So the outcome of this parenthesis will be first. And if we use an operator here and true, it's gonna return first because as we learned first and true is first. So if I run this, you receive first here. And same thing, if I change this an operator to or operator like that, Okay, so let me also change this value. Then you will see true because first or true will always return true because at least one of the operand contains the value of true. So if I run this, 
you will see true as well. Okay, so let me show you a quick example of using the or and and together in the same expression. So what we have right now will return true because we have a first or true. So let's say that you have another expression like that and true. And we didn't define any order of operations, meaning that we didn't actually set the parentheses to here to here. So what Python will do here is that it's going to start from the left side. So this expression will return first or and this expression will return true. So the outcome of this first or true is true. And and then the Python will actually evaluate true and true, which is going to return true here. So let me just write a simple comment here. So this entire expression will return true. And then we can put the parentheses here and true. So as we learned, true and true will return true. So if I run this, you will see true. Okay, so now let's talk about the identity operator. So the identity operator checks whether the two variables that you are comparing, meaning the two objects that you are comparing is actually the same object. So we're gonna use a syntax called is. So let me first create a two variables. So string one is ABCD, string two is also ABCD. And before I actually use the identity operator to compare the string one and string two, let me first use the Python's built-in function called ID. So print ID string one. So this ID function will print out the memory location of where the string one variable is stored at. And then same thing, print ID string two. And if you run this, you will see the two exactly same memory location ID. So this means that the string one and string two is actually referring to the same object. So in this case, if I write print string one is string two, which is the identity operator here. So we are checking whether the string one object is identical to string two object. So when we run this, you will see true here because the string one here and string two here shares the same memory location, meaning that it's the same object. So then at this point, you might be kind of confused of, hey, then what's the difference between this identity operator versus the equal to operator? Because if I were to just write a print statement saying string one equal to string two and run this, you will also see true because the string one has the value of ABCD and string two also has the value of ABCD. So the difference here is that the equal to operator only checks the value while the age operator, which is the identity operator checks whether the string one variable is the same object as the string two variable. So it's not necessarily checking whether the value is identical. However, it's actually checking whether the two variables are referring to the same object here. So technically every variable that you create in Python, such as like this one string one and string two they supposed to have a two different memory ids because these are the two different variables but python has this optimization method called string interning that happens behind the scene where if the string one and string two's value are same the string two will actually refer to the memory location of the string one so that's why we are actually seeing the same result whenever we run the identity operator in this statement and equal to operator in this statement. But let me show you a different example where if you create a two different variables, they will have a two different memory location. We cannot really create the integer variable because Python has a similar thing as the string interning for the integer, which is called uh, integer caching. So let me just create a two different list variable. So I'm gonna create list one and set that equal to a, b, and then list two. And then let me just copy and paste this. Okay, so now we have a two list variables that has the same value. So if I were to write a print statement with an equal to operator and then run this, it's going to return true because the values that we have for the list one is identical to the list two. But if I run the identity check on this, so list one is list two, this expression will return first because list one's memory location is different than list two. So if I run this, you will see first. And we can easily check this by printing out the ID. So ID list one and print ID list two. Then run this you will see a uh, two different memory location. So Python has this kind of like optimization method for both string and integer. So for the string, we have the string interning and for the integer, we have an integer caching. But for other data types such as list, Python actually assigns different memory location for each variable that we create. And we can clearly see that the identity operator checks whether the list one object is actually identical to list two object, meaning that it's gonna check the memory location. But the equal to operator is gonna check whether the value is identical. And 
And this is pretty important differentiation that we have to be aware of whenever we actually get into the development because sometimes you want to compare the two objects together to see whether the two objects are identical but some other times you are just checking whether the values that you set for this variable is actually identical to other variables value that you set. Okay, so finally, let's talk about the membership operator. So the membership operator can be useful if you want to actually find the target within the given data types that you're searching against. So let me show you an example. So membership operator, and we're gonna use your operator called in. So let's say that we have a string like that. String one, A, B, C, D. And then we want to search whether character A exists in string one. So in this case, I'm gonna write a print statement a in string one so we are checking whether the character a exists in the string one that we have here so if i run this it's going to return true and this in operator also works with any substring that can exist in the string one so if i say uh, print a b in string one it's going to return true because a b is a substring within the string one so if i run this it's going to return true and just one more time so if I say I want to check whether CD exists in the string one, and I can just say CD in string one. And you can just run this and you will see true as well. And we can also use the logical operator not here. So if you want to check that the target string CD does not exist in the string one, then you can just put the not operator here. And then if we run this, you will see first because the CD does exist in string one. So not in will actually return first. And this membership operator can be especially useful if you are working with other data types such as list, tuple, or dictionary. So I'm gonna create a list called student list and then put some name here. Steve, and then Dan, and Ray. Okay, so we have a four students in this student list and I wanna check whether Danny exists in this list. So that all we need to do is just write print Danny in student list. And then if I were to print this out, you will see true because Danny do exist in this list as an element and you can also test out different name like Dan and then run this you will see true as well because Dan exists here and also you can try a different name that does not exist in this list and if you run this you will see first Okay, so now let's try to have a final example that covers comparison, logical, identity, and membership operators all together at the same time. So I have some variables already set up for you. So let me write a print statement. So number one plus number two equal equal number three. So in the first expression, if you add number one by number two, whether it's gonna equal to number three, and then I'm gonna put and, enter. And then the second expression will be name one is name two. And so in the second expression, I'm checking whether name one object is identical to name two object. And in the last expression, I'm going to check whether Danny exists in student list. So we have a two and statement here. So if we were to evaluate this before we run this, this is going to return true. And this second expression will return first because name one object is not equal to name two object because obviously the Python will now create two different objects because the name one and name two values are different as I explained before. And in the last expression, I'm checking whether Danny exists as an element in the student list. So which is going to return true. So we have a true first and true. And because we are using the and logical operators here, when you run this, it's gonna return first because it's a true, first, and true. And because the second expression that we have here is first, and if you use the and logical operators, if you have at least one first, it's gonna return to first. But if you change this and operator to or, it's gonna return true because it's true, first, and true. So if I run this one more time, it's gonna return true as you see. And also we can convert this to and again, and then say, name one is not name two meaning the name one object is not identical to name two object and then if we do that all three expressions that we have here is true and we have a two and logical operators so it's going to return true so if i run this you will see true here Okay guys, that's it for this video. We've talked about different types of operators including comparison, logical, identity, and membership. And these operators will be especially useful when we get to talk about conditioners and loops. So if you have any questions or comments, please comment down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please click the subscribe and like button. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in next videos.